Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Coffee with the Critters, where we live stream every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, unless otherwise notified. And uh, when we do that, it's usually at 9 o'clock a.m. when we have a guest speaker on, and you're going to want to pay close attention because we have one scheduled for the month of January and another one scheduled for the month of February. And these are both guest speakers that have never been on before that I have been working a very long time on getting them on. So welcome everybody. My name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We're an international educational center where we teach people all over the world how to empower animals and the people that care for them. And we do that through our live streaming services, uh, which you can find out more about on our website at the animalbehaviorcenter.com. Uh, we've been live streaming our services for well over eight years. Um, happy to do that where we, we reach numerous different people in different countries. Um, you can also get in touch with me by emailing me at Laura, L-A-R-A, at the animalbehaviorcenter.com. I sit down I try twice a day in the mornings and in the evenings to answer all my emails and questions that are sent my way. Um, for those that are new, we focus our work in teaching people how to use B.F. Skinner's laws of behavior and applied behavior analysis in working with animals and behaviors, behavior modification, training and enrichment. Um, you can also keep track of where I will be speaking and the workshops we are holding on our events page here on our Facebook page or on our website. Uh, you can also, which one is this? Find it on our website. That's what that graphic is. <laughs> um, so uh, you can keep... You can also follow us um, and keep in touch with us in, uh, on our uh, email newsletter, which I send out every week, and I'm starting to add a little more detail that, to that every week. So I want to go ahead and get started on um, our goals for 2024. I sat down yesterday with Lindsay Douglas, um, and I keep in touch with all the volunteers regularly and the staff saying, what are our goals? What are our focuses for this year? And we have a lot. <laughs> I just sat here for the past hour putting together photos of our goals for 2024. And I've got about 45 photos to show you. So that means we're going to be very busy. Um, so winter, it's been snowing since I woke up this morning at 630. It's three hours later and it's still snowing. If it's going to be cold, bring on the snow. Um, we have a lot of goals for 2024. Um, we care for many different species of animals. Um, and we focus on the best welfare possible for these animals. These animals are educators to the public. And I find that animals are some of our best teachers and we interact with them through training, um, behavior modification and enrichment. And I'm going to start off with one of our goals, one of our mini goals. I wrote down our top 10 and these are pretty um, eager and aggressive goals. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Peggy, Therese, Ray, Sharice. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Beth, thank you for all your continued um Trust in the work that I do. Stephanie, good morning. Tim, Lynn. Um, all right. So winter, it's when a lot of animals are indoors. Um, I always focus really heavily on the winter on teaching animals what I what we need them to work with us on when they go back outside in the summer. Um so this is what we're, this is one of the things we're focusing on. Uh, when we were coming up with this list, I was like, alligators. Um, 
So yesterday, if you are in our advanced um, applied animal behavior and training um, membership group, you saw how much Bruce is advancing. He's our young American alligator um, that was donated to us. And he is, we started target training him yesterday. What's the goal in target training? Numerous things. Um, we also, you guys have watched our work with Elvis and Priscilla. So one of our main goals with the alligators this coming year, um, Elvis and Priscilla are in brumation, but Bruce is not. So we're constantly working with him. One of the next things we're working with Bruce on is we want him to get on a scale, follow the target stick, get crate trained. Um, so we don't have to use force with him to get him outside this summer. Um, that was one of the first things I had thought of uh, is what I want to work on this winter to get ready for the summer. Um, the next thing, um, one of our main goals, which is going to get started here really soon, hopefully, um, I want to get started with this within the next couple of weeks, is designing a new enclosure for Dill and Chili and getting prepared for what their outdoor enclosure is going to look like this summer and keeping them used to change. It's really, it's extremely important for us to keep all animals in our care used to change. Um, because when they stay in stagnant environments, you'll see behavior issues skyrocket and welfare decrease. Um, this is in my personal experience of empowering animals over the year. Hey, Jack, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Um, we're also, I started working pretty heavily with a couple of red rough lemurs, um, two young red rough lemurs. Here's Jackson. No, this is Larry. And here's Jackson. Um, I'm just starting my work with them. You'll be able to see that in our advanced online membership as well. Um, we're introducing them to a third rub, rub, red rough, which is named Red, um, which is going extremely well. Um, so that is the second thing we thought of that we want to accomplish this year. Our third thing, you've seen some of our work starting with the wolves. Um, it can be a little more challenging for me, what I'm finding out working with them in the winter, because you're bulked up in hat and outdoor gear. Um, but we have been working on them with focus and control exercises, getting them to station. Um, we're getting ready to start training them um, for vaccinations, voluntary um, voluntary work on husbandry behaviors, such as vaccinations. This winter, we're going to work on a lot of focus and control exercises with all the wolves because once comes summer, um, we're going to be more interactive with them. And one of the things we're going to work on, well, right now we're working on letting them, um, having them voluntarily accept letting us giving them ear injections. Um, Stacy has been working on getting them to open their mouth to check their teeth. We can get them to open their mouth on cue. I want them crate trained this summer um, in all of this without the use of force. Um, okay, something else we're working on is you guys have maybe been following the, our nonprofit, the Sam I Can Foundation. You can find that um, I've been posting it in our newsletters and it, uh, Sam I Can Foundation does have a Facebook page. We recently brought in DC, the Moluccan cockatoo, which there's not really a lot known about his history. Um, so we're finding out uh, um, more about his history through interacting and training with him, not training him, but training with him. We're teaching him, he's teaching us. He came to us from Parrot Hope Rescue in Manawa, Ohio. 
and their main goal was for him to, for us to teach him to step up he's stepping up fabulously if you're following our work with him in the parrot project you'll see the struggles we've had with him and how we're overcoming them how we're changing frustration we're redirecting frustration on to focus on other things and it's working so beautifully and um dc has been with us since right before thanksgiving so about a month and a half he is blossoming he is such a character i took this photo yesterday um, after he stepped up onto my arm, I took this selfie on purpose because there's Sam, the mascot, in the background in the picture of the Sam I Can Foundation. Even though Sam passed away, um, his passing away is why we started the Sam I Can Foundation because a lot of us, it really hurt us emotionally based on Sam's history um, of just knowing and doing better with animals. Um, so, and Sam continues to help so many other animals, even though he is gone. So this is something I worked with DC um, this past week. This was just a couple of days ago. I want him on this play gym um, because right now his time with us when he comes out of the cage has been spent only on this island in the kitchen at the Animal Behavior Center. I want him on this play gym because it helps incorporate new environment changes. Uh, we'll talk more about the play gyms later. Um, and the more you can keep animals used to change, the less stress in their environment, the more eager and curious, curious they become. When you have a curious animal, do not punish curiosity because um, it can punish their behaviors of interacting in different different situations where the animal is learning and thriving from. Um, so here's some of the volunteers interacting with DC over the past week. My goal was to, because I'm the primarily one, I'm the one primarily training him, what that's going to do is it's going to increase his relationship with me. And when we're working with numerous different species of animals, what's extremely important is keeping that balance and keeping that animal eagerly wanting to work with other people besides just me. So the animal doesn't become over bonded with me. And that is what I'm going to be talking about at the, uh, Parrot Festival, the 25 year anniversary of the Parrot Festival coming up in Houston at the end of this month is um, working with overbonding and separation anxiety with parrots. Um, so he's come a long way and it's taken me numerous weeks to get to this point. But I'm with con contingency and consistency, I am teaching him. Um, this is what this, when I move my hands in this way, this is what this means. Um, being very consistent with that to keep a clear line of communication with him so I can be predictable. And um, predictability does have its place when working with animals, which we don't understand, quite understand yet, or working with fearful animals. Um, so... He's come so far and there's certain things like yesterday was the first time I was able to do certain things with him. I'm feeding him uh, pieces of food from my hand. Yesterday he was on the island eating broccoli and I made those pieces of food get smaller and smaller and smaller to where it was so tiny that he had to touch my fingers in order to get to the, get the food. But that's one of the ways I'm being consistent and predictable. And at the same time, he's taking the food. I'm watching his behavior, which is contextual, um, to make sure I have a clear understanding of what I'm seeing with him. Um, one of the next things on our list, um, we are currently discussing and talking about um, an outdoor enclosure for Fred and Wilma, the black cast hornbills. Um, that have been 
with us for a couple of years. Um, they need that outdoor enclosure. Outdoor enclosures help provide change, consistent change um, in the animal's environment. There's nothing better than Mother Nature for the animals in our care. I will never beat her. That is not my intention, but my intention is that is my goal. I always set my levels extremely high because I won't stop trying to reach for them for the best welfare of the animal. So we're currently in the process of designing their outdoor enclosure. And a lot of times when we're thinking about this is what we want for the future of the animal, what we need to keep in mind is what steps is it going to take for us to get there. This is shaping, reinforcing small approximations towards the target behavior. So in order to get Fred and Wilma to the outdoor, their outdoor enclosures, which we've come so far with them, if you guys remember, we weren't even able in, when we first started working with them, we weren't even able to get in the same room with them um, without fear. Now they're out and about flying around and how are we gonna get them to their outdoor enclosure? That is via a crate. So once we get an animal in the crate, it doesn't mean behavior training goal ended, boom, slam that door shut. Now you have to shape the behavior of their comfort level of the door being shut, picking up the um, crate and moving them. So we still have a lot of shaping to do with them. Um, so let's see what's next. Um, we want aviaries for all the birds that are in residing at the Animal Behavior Center. We want to see them outside because aviaries provide so much more than we than we can indoors. So we did end up putting a prototype together last fall for Rico, and now we're designing the size, um, the layout. Um, how these are going to, how are we going to clean them? How are we going to access perch placement? How are we going to prevent predators? Because now um, we are, the Animal Behavior Center resides in partially in the woods and next to the woods. So we have to think about um, prevention um, for when that time comes. Um Next thing, um, one other thing we're working on is we're working on very complex play gyms for um, while the birds are inside. And this is just a kind of like a basic look of what these look like. Wait till you see where we're going with these. Um, so our flighted and unflighted birds do hang out on these. Um, it's so important for we get every single bird out daily. And that's in addition to our work with the gators every day, the wolves every day, the lemurs every day, providing enrichment. So wait till you see where we go with these play gyms. Um, we have, they're going to be pretty, pretty damn complex um, because the more complex an animal, uh, the more complexity we provide to animals, the prevention of boredom, the more choice they have, and the more control they have. And we want animals to feel in full control of their environment. We do that through change, and we do that through training, and we do that, we provide that through enrichment. Um, <laughs> this is one that was thrown out. Sorry, I do that occasionally. <laughs> I turn myself, I turn myself off in my live stream. Um, so in 40 photos that I have in this studio that I'm working on, I got to switch through, and I was like, "Where am I? Where am I?" Um, so this one was thrown at me yesterday. Um, we can do this. 
Um, the past couple of years, um, we work with numerous different people through workshops. We also have a day with the trainer. So all these photos that you're seeing of the work that we're doing, I have to do this every single day, seven days a week, uh, because I'm very passionate about what I do and I want to see these animals empowered. So if you want to see what I do and participate in what I do, you can come join me for a day with the trainer. You can do that for one day, two days, or three days where it's just me and you. And I'm like, this is the behaviors I need to get. This is how we're going to do it. These are the challenges we face. We brainstorm standing in front of the animal. And then we go in and start training. And you can do that with me in a day with the trainer. Um, but this was one that was thrown at me yesterday. Uh, we need to be doing more workshops. Yes, we do. We already have um, workshops where our workshops are small. So everybody gets hands-on training, learning, problem solving. Uh, people tell me what their problems are. And maybe it's not, if they tell me their problem is on a timing issue, I'll say, we need to work with the lemurs. You want to perfect your timing? Because we know how fast they are. Um, your approach, we need to work with the gators. So we, our goal is to have four different um, workshops this coming 2024 and all different. So our understanding behavior through working with birds uh, fills and sells out every year. That is scheduled for this May. Um, we have a parrot and workshop scheduled in April. Uh, but the understanding behavior through working with birds is really fine tuning your technique. And sometimes I take you out with other animals. Um, but I'm going to come up with two different workshops this coming year to continue to take participants to the next level. Um, thought I had one more in my workshop. I guess not. Uh, let's see. Our another goal is, and this isn't a goal, I guess it is, I want to continue to empower our volunteers and our staff through working with a wide variety of animals um, and teaching, just continuing to increase the complexity in environments and helping people better understand the needs of animals. The volunteers and staff are very important to me. Uh, yes, I do own the Animal Behavior Center, but I always tell everybody, I am not your boss. I am part of the team. We, this is what makes the Animal Behavior Center um, so successful is we all work together. And right now over the past couple of weeks, We've been working very hard together. Um, and one of the last things I want to mention, but definitely not least, and this is for me, this is what I want to do. So over the past um, several years, I have stopped writing and I want to start my writing again because it brings me comfort I love writing. I'm very passionate about it. So I'm going to continue writing. And one of the great things about writing is I sit down in my office and guess who's always in my office with me when she's out is Kuki, our kookaburra. Um, she's always hanging out in there and it's usually on me, on my hand. So I have to type with one hand. Um but you will find you will start to find my articles being published in periodicals again and definitely pay attention to the blog because i want to get that up moving and started again um so jack says can you send us the information for the parrot workshop we would love to share it absolutely jack um I am happy to get that to you and I will get in touch with you today. Um, so with that being said, um, 
If you want to see more of what we do, uh, please pay attention to our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and Instagram, and our TikTok. Um, there you will, in our, did I say our website? There you will find all the information about the work that we do. These are my goals for 2024. I am going to do my damnedest to keep get each and every one of these attained. And our work starts now. And um, before I end the live stream, I want to thank you, our followers, those of you that support the work that we do, share the work that we do. I appreciate you. And I will continue to give you my all, whether it's here in Coffee with the Critters, on our blog, or on our online learning subscriptions. And uh, tomorrow I will be recording our next topic in our podcast, which is released every month. And that is in our memberships. Um, so with that being said, I want to say thank you. Happy New Year, everybody. And I stay tuned. Um, I'm going to be sending out an email stating the dates for the our guest here on Coffee with the Critters in January and the one in February. Thank you all. See you next. See you next Sunday.